I've come for you, Barnabas. Stay close, Torvald. tower it's alive okay I guess we're just going in I just can't tell how much longer the game is. <laughs> is this gonna be just like the second to last chapter? Or are we gonna unlock more after this? Like, uh, if you asked me 10 hours ago when the game was gonna end, I would say we were only three fourths of the way through and that it would continue after we defeated Barnabas because obviously they were setting up that like all of the icons are gonna fall and then we're gonna need to deal with Ultima and stuff. And I assumed we would make more allies. Like. Uh, Dion, right? Like, what's Dion up to? Is this just the end of his story? Is this, like, <laughs> what happens there, you know? Uh, it just, it feels like, it feels like the game could really continue, but at the same time, I don't know. Where do we go?
Ouch. Did it? Oh, it did right at the end of my limit, too. Not bad. Nice, level up. Alright, level 24, respectable. If I were Barnabas, where would I be? The top. So I could look down on the world.
Let me grab that healing. That's not healing, that's where it. Green should always mean healing. I should never be confused about that. down over and over again so I can get as many precision uh, ravages as possible. It's also still doing good just to keep your stun box. Deals with the damage. You know what? I probably need to use arcade mode, a mode that I touched once and forgot about. Uh, in order to get some of the, the stuff to fuse the gun around. I wonder if that's how it also expects you to like uh, get really high level and like things like that. That weird sound effect. I mean, I guess this thing does a ton of uh, stagger damage. Holy crap. not really healing me at all. Holy crap. Did I just stagger lock this thing? Holy smokes. 
Holy crap, maybe I unlocked the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate way to play. Holy smokes. That was wild. What was that thing? Hopefully there aren't any more. If I literally, is that the just key to stun locking bosses? Holy smokes. Still giving me war right, like what is even the point? That way. I like the music in this area though, it's pretty good.
fight two of these things at once. It'll be a nightmare. Because I don't think I killed the control node. I'm not sure how we killed that. It didn't seem like it had that little health, but I guess we did it. Sure, why not? <laughs> I had to use all my high potions though, unfortunate. That was a kindness, I suppose, for the game to give us that. He's here. I can feel him.
The blade must ever feed if her edge is to remain keen. Not true. Uh, using a sword dulls it. What care That's you for these worthless creatures? They are nothing. Weak from the moment of their conception, ever longing for power not theirs to command, they turn unfailingly upon themselves. Like sheep, they roam in filthy flocks, eager to trample those few gifted a fleece of gold. Or that they might feel contentment with their pitiful existence. Prejudice and persecution, severance and strife, every earthly wrong springs from the malice in men's hearts. Malice born of the pain and suffering that is free will. Its corruption is gnawed at your being from the very moment of your birth. You're wrong. It is no corruption. It is who I am. Every choice I make, right or wrong, gives me reason to carry on. And carry on I shall. Not as a puppet, but as a man. Which are you? <laughs> there was a time I too thought those the only choices. What? Long ago, God granted man the gift of magic. And with that gift did he build great civilizations. Yet over time, man lost sight of the gift's true meaning. Stepping from the path of shared prosperity to one of avarice. He abandoned his creator for sword and flame, and through his folly, beckoned the blight. <clears throat> Yet, there were those few who refused to turn their eyes from the heavens. And they prayed to God that he might lead them back to righteousness. And the Lord, he did answer. Before the worthy shall the gates of paradise open, and so did I spread my arms to the ether and cast my soul upon its gentle waters. I gave myself unto him. Proven, the Lord charged me thus. If your kind are to find salvation, they must be made to serve. You see, paradise lies but a single step away. Could we only take it? Could we only leave our transgressions behind? For none save the pure of heart and mind may set foot in the new world. I will save us. But it all begins and ends with you. You are the key, Mythos. And with this humble offering, shall I prove my faith once more. So you forsook your kingdom. You forsook yourself to serve. Tell me, how is that living? <laughs> you seek to provide is not salvation it's anything but life is about always having a choice take that away is it and we might as well be dead i don't <laughs> i'm all about free will and all that but i just don't think <laughs> there are plenty of situations when you don't have a choice and that's like okay that's part of life i'm not saying that this is one of those moments but 
Clive's worldview, just like when you think about it and interrogate it, doesn't really make much sense. Very well. Come then. Show us the strength of your will. It's not the strength of my will that should worry you. But the weakness of yours. Like, ultimately, nothing Barnabas says means anything. It's just nonsense. But, like, also, it's just, like, nothing Clyde is saying means anything. It's it's two characters gesturing at themes, being like, I, th I think nihilism should win because God will destroy us all anyway. So, um... That's what we should do. It's divine. And it's like, okay, whatever. You're like the avatar of darkness or whatever. Who cares? But then Clive is like, actually, I think we should fight uh, because life is all about having a choice. And choice is, choice is what's good, and I'm the good guy. So we're going to do, I'm going to fight you, and then good will win over evil because that's all this is now. And it's like, man, there was, like, intrigue in this story before and, like, complex machinations where characters who were evil were evil for, like, nuanced, petty reasons and, like, were caught up in relations with each other and, like, when I say relations, I don't even mean romance. I mean, like, there are complex political and ideological reasons why, you know, certain characters are the way they are. And that just disappeared in favor of uh, actually choice is good and rebellion is what we must do and um, no rebelling is, is evil and in fact we're going to extrapolate that to the logical conclusion of rebelling against God or not anyway uh, this is also to say that like other religions exist in this setting Grieger isn't even the main like they are not the deities we are dealing with. Uh, that's the whole point of all of the religious uh, stuff in the game, is that there are multiple religions, but we're just like not gonna comment on that. It's actually just like Ultima and the eons and whatever, the icons and whatever. It's just like, it's so weird. It, it fails to have any actual narrative stakes, I think, because of that. change God shows you to serve as his vessel and you cling to this foolish notion of hope when there is none and like this is this is another good example but like stories like to cling to this idea of like hope versus hopelessness hope versus nihilism you know stuff like that uh uh hope versus nihilism and stuff like that but like it's just the the thing with this stuff and the, the reason why nihilism is one, such an ideological trap, but two, such like a, a topic of debate among philosophers is that there's like, there is a nuanced degree of like things to discuss and consider when talking about topics of nihilism. Nihilism is not all about like 
God said that you're the divine one, so you have to ascend to heaven. Nihilism is literally about the lack of meaning and the lack of agency in the world. And while obviously fate implies that there is no agency, we know that characters have free will and that characters are like acting out. So even if you're condemned to a fate, that doesn't mean you don't have agency outside of that fate. So a lot of this stuff falls you have flat. Been shown the path. Now you must follow it. A lot of this stuff falls Free flat. Yourself, Mythos. Because you will not defeat me otherwise. Barnabas and we'll Clive's see. world perspectives on hope and and Perhaps destiny and like the lack of agency see. don't actually match up with the world that we've seen in this game so far and don't actually match up with the conflicts that have been built up and have been made interesting. Like, all of the intrigue at the beginning is basically unrelated to all of this, which is a bummer, because, like, obviously we had, uh, what's her name, uh, fostering the child of Ultima, basically, but, like, that ended up not really mattering at all in the grand scheme of things. Like, that sh the fact that that plan failed should prove that, uh, that, that free will exists and that fate isn't a condemnation. It's not something you just have to live with. Uh, because we beat what that person was doing. And like, you know, his uh, idea of godliness is not immutable, um, which is fine. You know, I'm not saying it, it needs to be, but there needs to be something behind Barnabas's logic for him to feel like a well-written character and like a character with an actual ideology besides like, we're gonna make him nihilistic because that's evil, you know? Um, because his nihilism isn't actually rooted in anything. It doesn't make any sense given the character that we've been uh, dealing with. Uh, and without getting into spoilers for a game that we're not talking about here, but like this game is by the Final Fantasy XIV team and Final Fantasy XIV by the end is a very, very well written game. Um, but the whole time that game existed, it had a really big problem in the form of a character named Xenos, who was equally just an anime villain with no ideology, who sometimes vaguely motions towards topics of nihilism, but like, again, his actual like ideology isn't that at all, and doesn't have any, uh, standing in the game itself or like the game world that we have seen portrayed and they just have to hold on to that character's baggage until basically the end and it's really annoying because that character and his lack of like meaningful character arc or development or ideology at all drags down a story that's otherwise really thematically potent you admitted defeat the moment you turned your back on us. See, like, that doesn't mean anything. When you turned your back on the truth, Barnabas. We are not as weak as your god believes. And now Clive is saying choice is what matters, but you're giving people ultimatums. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like really weak character writing between these two.